Well, the second thing I wanna go through is what I carry in this little personal bag of mine. So it's empty right now, but well, I'll show you what I put in here. First of all, I have my sketchbook and notebook. So this has been a real pleasure of mine. I have a label on the front from Mount Whitney that I went up a few years ago. And I just basically keep things in here that are meaningful to me. I usually write out uh, kind of where I've been that day and I'll write some notes and uh, kind of keep a journal. I also like to take notes during our devotionals. And I also enjoy sketching. So I think we're gonna ask you all to take some time and sketch. Here's a, a Middle Ray Lake sketch I did uh, a few years back. And this is not one of the lakes we're going to, but it's a beautiful lake. Here's um, Sheephorn Mountain uh, from a trip we did up in Alaska. And again, I'm not much of an artist, but that kind of it is meaningful to me because it reminds me of, of what it was that I saw. Um, and so I think that's an important part of being out in the backcountry is to record your memories. Um, that way, when you get home, and even now I look at these things, here's a, uh, this is the Muir Hut in the, um, I believe this is in Sequoia National Park. So there are, there's a lot of things you're going to see on your trips. And if you get in the habit of recording them, um, then when you come back next year and get a chance to look at things um, from years past, that you'll have some fond memories to draw back on. So I keep my journal. With my journal, I also keep some sketching pencils. So here's, I keep four different uh, pencils. They're very short, so they don't weigh very much. And I keep a sharpener in here as well for that. So I'm gonna stick those in my, my little bag here. So I'll put those in here and we'll show how we pack that up a little bit later. In here, I also keep my swim goggles. So I love swimming and I love getting up in the water and cleaning ourselves off. And um, so this allows me to get in the water and see if there's any fish. And also I feel a little bit more safer when I can see. Um, I also have in here my toothbrush. It's a mini toothbrush, basically just the head of a one of those electric brushes. But that's a nice way to be a little bit lighter on that. I have a comb. I'm going to cut that in half. It's too big. I'll carry some sunscreen with me and I'll carry some chapstick. I'll show you where I put the chapstick and sunscreen because I keep those not in this bag, but in a different spot. And of course, my mini toothpaste. Um, also in here um, are a few other things. I keep some uh, insect repellent wipes. Uh, I find these work well for me. If you're the type of person who's really sensitive to bugs, you may want to have something a little stronger, but this uh, Benz uh, with the DEET is great. This is only 30% DEET. And then I keep a little game in here. Sometimes I'll carry, I don't usually carry a deck of cards, but I like to carry these little liar's dice, which is a kind of a fun group game. Maybe you can take two or three people with these really lightweight dice. These weigh about, I don't know, an ounce or something like that. And um, it's just kind of a fun way to, to be together uh, in the campsite. And there's a lot of games we can come up with while we're out hiking and backpacking as well. So these all go into my this little bag of mine. And um, then the last thing in here is a, a roll of tape. This actually I keep in here, but I also keep another roll of tape in my first aid kit. And one final last thing that goes in this personal bag is gold bond. This stuff is magic. This stuff right here is like a talcum powder. But for some reason, this is better than uh, a typical talc powder. Learned about this at a scout camp. And basically you put this on your feet or any of the any of the creeks and crevices in your body that tend to get rashy or uncomfortable. This is great, it makes you feel comfortable. Also takes a little bit of the odor away, which your tent mates will appreciate. So that goes in my personal bag here as well. So I'm gonna get this bag packed up and then you'll see where this bag ends up in my, my backpack. One last thing I should mention, I always carry matches. That is one of the 10 essentials. I have a couple sets of matches. This is a waterproof set I carry. This goes in my bag here, but I also carry a different way to light fires in my cooking set. So here it is, that's my, my personal bag. Well, let's go now to the next set of things I have laid out on this, on this table here, which is my cooking area. So cooking's pretty straightforward. You know, I'll carry with me um, my, you know, this is a equivalent of an old Sierra cup, but it's basically a titanium container. It's a little bit larger than some of the small ones. This way I can put soup, I can put oatmeal, um, I can put a you know macaroni and cheese in here, whatever I want. And I carry a, a spork. So here's a titanium spork, has my name on it. In fact, I got two of them. One of them has my friend's name on it, but he doesn't know that. So here you go, two of these, and that's a nice thing to carry. And then I also carry a little bit of this camp sud. So camp suds works pretty well, it's biodegradable. Don't wanna use a lot of it, but sometimes I use this to wash my hands. Sometimes I use it to clean up uh, the dishes or uh, clean my, my container. Often I can get away without using the suds as well. And finally, here's my uh, stove. So this is a canister, it's a, a, a gas canister. And then here's the stove. This is a snow peak. 
Um, but there's lots of them that are like this, uh, but this one I find to be quite nice. It's a snow peak, it opens up, this screws onto the container that I just showed you, the gas canister, opens up like that, very lightweight. It has a built-in, you can hear it there, it's a, a, um, uh, uh, an igniter for the, for the canister. I keep it safe and secure by putting it in this container. And this is my stove that I carry. Not everyone needs to have a stove, mind you, but each group needs to have a stove. Each cooking pod of four people should have one stove. I also carry with me, um, as part of the cooking uh, material, a container. Now, this is a little tricky to talk about because I'll take, maybe if it's just me by myself, I'll just take this. But if I'm going with people, then one of us needs to carry um, some type of a pot that can boil water, which is what this one is. Um, there's lots of these. This is a C to Summit uh, one that I have linked uh, on the gear list. This is nice because it has the big container. Then you have a small container that also pops out that can be used as a, a bowl to eat with. And, um, you know, one could get by just with these two things and skip this container. But the concept is you need to have one container to eat out of, and the group needs to have something that you can boil water in. So again, I have this in my personal gear list, but I'm gonna communicate with the two or three leaders that are on my trip to make sure we don't all have one of these. Just one of us needs to have one. All right, so that's my um, cooking uh, set, and I'll leave that out, um, and I'll show you where I pack that. Let's move over now to the first aid kit. First aid kit is, uh, you know, it's kind of personal, whatever you find is necessary, but there's a few straightforward things that everyone should have. But I indicate this on my pack with a first aid cross. On the back, I have written down what's in here. I have some glue, I have uh, Band-Aids, uh, some Advil. Um, I have my personal medications, I like a uh, uh, decongestant, I have an antibiotic, I um, have a painkiller if we need it, Advil. I also have down here um, an eye drop. And uh, because I'm a surgeon, I also bring some suture because nothing says backpacking like suturing up someone's cut body part. Um, just kidding, but not really. So that's my first aid kit. All those things are in here and um, you know I can open it up and show you what's inside, but basically this is my first aid kit. I always check this before I leave uh, to make sure I have everything. Also in my first aid kit or next to it is this, and this is a, a uh, a beacon that we use. Uh, so if you're out backpacking um, in the modern era, we will bring a beacon with us. And the beacon allows us to communicate to family and friends our whereabouts. If there's an emergency message, we can get that message um, to our contacts back at home. Also, if our family needs to contact us, sometimes we have success in getting the message. But generally, we, we don't plan so much on that. Uh, but we do want to be able to uh, call for help if we need it. So this is one of these or similar product will be on each of the trips um, in case there is a type of an emergency that requires um, uh, emergency assistance, even the event of a helicopter coming to get us. That would, that's what this would be for. So we will have that. Let's go now to what I care, consider my in-camp uh, activity or my in-camp uh, equipment. So in the camp, I like to have my, uh, my towel. So this is a, a quick dry towel. It's kind of a chamois towel. It's a kind of a large one, but uh, I like the large one. Um, I'll use this also, it's clean. And so when I'm in the tent and I wanna, if I wanna lay it on my face, sometimes I'll actually put it over my eyes or I'll put it under my head. Um, but again, mainly it's a towel and I use it to dry off with. Um, that's my towel. Here's my camp shoes. I like to get my boots off my feet as, as soon as I can when I get into camp. These are lightweight water shoes. They don't weigh very much. Um, you can pick these up for Maybe $10, Speedo makes a, a, a variety. Um, you can get them for maybe $20, it just depends. You gotta look around, but these are nice to have. Something closed-toed. You don't wanna have sandals or, um, you know, Tevas are good. Um, a lot of the flip-flops, I would say, um, are not the best idea because of the open toe. If you have an open toe, then walking through camp and you, if you cut your toe open, just makes the rest of the trip uncomfortable. You really wanna protect your feet as much as possible. And then I also have my, my headlight. So this is a headlight. Uh, I, I, at the beginning of each trip, will put new batteries in this light. Um, it's probably wise to bring an extra set of batteries. But having said that, I kind of know myself and I know I'm not gonna use a lot of this light product uh, during the trip. And so I'll just use the one set of batteries that I bring. But if you think you might be using a lot of light, bring an extra set. 
let's look behind me here. And what you'll see here is the is basically what I'm sleeping with. So I have right here a, a Thermarest. This is a Neo Air Thermarest. It's not inflated right now, but this is my uh, this is what I'm going to actually inflate um, every night and then deflate it. It folds up nice and small. It's lightweight, so that's what I like to, to use. And I have a down sleeping bag over here. Um, I actually don't use a sleeping bag even, but just so you know what I'm using, I use what's called a quilt. So this is a a down uh, bag, and on the back of it, it's opened up. So there actually, it doesn't zip together, it just kind of lays over on top of me. What that means is while I'm sleeping, I need to actually um, wear uh, a pair of pants or uh, depending on the temperature outside, maybe even a, a jacket or a hat. But uh, that's, what I, that's what I use. And then finally for sleeping uh, is the tent. Again, this is, the, this is a three-man tent, so I'm not gonna carry this, um, you know, each of the three adults in our leadership pod aren't gonna all carry a tent, right? We'll have one tent and uh, hopefully I'll have uh, brother uh, Justin Johnson carry this tent in our group or maybe I'll get someone else and tell them it's really important and have them carry it. Tents are great and you'll all have a tent. Uh, it's totally fair, by the way, in the, in the summertime in August to head into the Sierra Nevada without a tent. I've done that many, many times. Without a tent, the alternative is to bring a tarp. And if you have a tarp, um, tarps can be used uh, with rope to uh, secure the tarp and basically create a shelter in case it rains. So I also carry with me rope. So I have this rope, I have a snap uh, piece of rope, and then I have some webbing in here. Uh, the webbing is something I'll use. I've used this for so many different things over the years, it's hard to even imagine uh, telling you uh, what those things have been, but it's great to have a little bit of webbing but you don't, don't need that. We do ask each person to bring a little bit of rope. And as part of the base camp experience, you're gonna get a lanyard, um, uh, some lanyard rope that you can use. One final thing is my pack um, uh, cover. So at nighttime, uh, you wanna make sure, as I mentioned, keeping your feet safe and healthy is important, but keeping your gear dry also help, helpful and important. So you wanna cover your pack at night. Get in your tent, starts to rain. You don't wanna worry about that. So here's just a little pack pack cover. It stretches, it's waterproof. I put it over my pack. Um, these are available at uh, you know any of the sporting goods stores. A cheaper way to do this is just to get a big garbage hefty bag, uh, trash bag, and put that over the, the, the pack at night. We'll have those available at the trailhead. So if someone shows up on the gear check, and they don't have a garbage bag or something to cover their pack with, we'll give you one. But here's what, here's what I use. So that's my, my cover. Let's move over here a little bit and I'll show you a couple other things. Um, one thing you'll see, I'm not gonna really go through, is my bear canister. So bear canisters is where we keep all the food. So I actually have uh, lots of food in here already and we'll show you that in a second. So my, the food setup I have here, um, you know, the, and you're gonna have something similar, but this is a combination of some dried meals. Let's see what this one is. Three cheese and mac cheese. Uh, that sounds pretty good. Let's see what this one is. Uh, this is beef stroganoff. And here's uh, uh, some other good things in here. But this is basically all the stuff we carry when we're putting our food together. And here's some nice soups here. This one is, uh, Actually, this is a pizza margarita wrap. So you mix this together with boiling water, take some fresh tortillas, you got a nice lunch. So we'll have, this is the bear canister. It'll have all my food for the week. Everyone will have a bear canister. They're not such a bad deal. I used to not like them, but now actually put all your food in there. It's great, keep it all secure. You leave it outside of the tent at nighttime. You put it uh, away from the camp. You secure it so the bear can't get in it. And then the nice thing is you actually have a nice uh, stool to sit on around the fire or around the campsite. Uh, at nighttime and talk with your friends. So bear canister, we'll have that. This last pile over here is all my extra clothing. Let's take, let's tell you what I got here. So I'm wearing, as I mentioned to you already, I'm wearing what I'm gonna have per day, but this is what I carry in my pack at night. So I have two extra pairs of wool socks. Worst mistake I ever made, no extra socks. Always bring extra socks. Two pair of wool socks. I have a swimsuit here. I have my extra undergarments. These are also nylon. And then I hike in this shirt every day. This is the, you'll see me in this shirt every day. But when I get into camp, I like to jump in the lake or river, rinse all my clothing off, and then I like to put on a clean pair of clothes. So here's my nice clean shirt that I'll put on. 
This is a, again, a non-cotton shirt. Everything I have here is non-cotton. I'll also put my, um, either the shorts I'm wearing or if it's getting a little cold, I'll put these, um, these are called uh, uh, polypropylene pants or just, uh, you know, some sweatpants, but again, they're non-cotton. That's my pants. And then I have, as it gets a little colder in the evening, I have a long sleeve shirt. Uh, you'll notice my black theme here. That's nothing gets dirty if it's black, that's for sure. And then I have, if it gets even colder, I have my down jacket that I take. And then my last shell, uh, in, in, the, in using the system of layering clothing for increasing uh, uh, difficult or for decreasing temperature, my last shell is my rain jacket. So that's what I have. So if it gets really cold, I'll have my, my, um, my pants on, I'll have a shirt, I might have a long sleeve shirt, maybe a down jacket, and maybe even a rain jacket. Again, pretty unusual in August to have that need, but that's what I have. Let's come over to the last area I have here. I mentioned, forgot to mention a few things. Uh, one is this uh, important area, which is the uh, trowel and toilet paper. Now that's a lot of toilet paper. I hope not to have that much. Um, I'm not gonna tell you how much to bring. I'd say 20 squares per day. How's that? You can figure it out. But maybe a half a roll is enough. And then I always put this in a, um, a Ziploc bag and that's, you know, that's my bag here. Inside this bag, I'll have another Ziploc bag, which is where we actually put the dirty toilet paper. We're not supposed to leave any toilet paper um, outside in the wilderness. We'll just pack it all out. And that's easy to do. We'll probably have little campfires where we can burn things at nighttime in some of the, in some of the trips. Um, but either way, we don't want to leave things that can be dug up and spread around. There's nothing worse than walking around and seeing um, someone's old toilet paper. Let's talk about the extra things that I bring in my trip. Thank you.